No, evolution does not make abortion or euthanasia right or wrong. It actually says nothing on those two topics. The argument for abortion rights is that women should have the freedom to decide what happens to their own body. Logical arguments can be mounted against this argument for abortion rights, but the point is that the argument has nothing to do whatsoever with evolution. Euthanasia is the idea that killing someone who wants to die but is incapable of killing himself is okay, as long as you have his permission. Essentially, it boils down to the same argument. The premise for legalizing suicide or assisted suicide is that people should have a choice over what happens to their own body. If they choose for their body to die, who are we to rob them of that control? Yes, I am advocating Jack Kevorkian here, although I do think that by violation of the Hippocratic Oath from helping people commit suicide, he probably should be stripped of his medical doctorate. Rape is illegal on the basis that the rapist robs the rapee of one of their most basic rights, the right to control their own body. Rape is about power. The rapist takes power from the rapee by assuming control over their body. By illegalizing suicide, we take a certain degree of power, a certain degree of control from the people. If rape is illegal, I contend to you that illegalized suicide should likewise be illegal. That said, although I support a person's right to die, I don't really recommend it. I find life rather enjoyable. Even if I didn't, I'd want to find something enjoyable before dying that I might not have died in misery. As such, I don't condone suicide. I just won't condemn it. First of all, if you take seriously that evolution has to do with, you know, the transition of life forms and that life and death are just natural processes, then one gets to be liberal about abortion and euthanasia. All of those kinds of ideas uh, seem to me follow very naturally from a Darwinian perspective. A deprivileging of human beings, basically. Um... Legalized euthanasia is a deprivileging of human beings? With savages, the weak in body or mind are soon eliminated. We civilized men, on the other hand, do our utmost to check the process of elimination. We build asylums for the imbecile, the maimed, and the sick. Thus, the weak members of civilized societies propagate their kind. No one who has attended to the breeding of domestic animals will doubt that this must be highly injurious to the race of man. Hardly anyone is so ignorant as to allow his worst animals to breed. Charles Darwin, The Descent of Man, 1871. This, Mr. Stein, is a quote mine. It's nice to see you've learned something from Mr. Wells. It just so happens I've read Darwin's work. Allow me to read you an excerpt from the very next paragraph. <clears throat> the aid which we feel impelled to give to the helpless is mainly an incidental result of the instinct of sympathy, which was originally acquired as part of the social instincts, but subsequently rendered, in the manner previously indicated, more tender and widely diffused. Nor could we check our sympathy, even at the urging of hard reason, without deterioration in the noblest part of our nature. The surgeon may harden himself whilst performing an operation, for he knows that he is acting for the good of his patient. But if we were to intentionally to neglect the weak and helpless, it could only be, be for a contingent benefit within overwhelming present evil. We must therefore bear the undoubtedly bad effects of the weak surviving and propagating their kind. In other words, Darwin says, although eugenics has superficial benefits, it's tremendously unethical, and to do it, we'd have to abandon all empathy. You don't need a Bible to practice empathy. America didn't become the great nation that it is by suppressing ideas. It progressed by allowing freedom of speech and freedom of inquiry. You have the right to inquire into whatever you damn well please. There's nothing stopping you from pulling out a microscope and looking around for evidence of design. There's nothing stopping you from speaking freely either. You can publish all the books you want, you can find a newspaper to print your stuff, however if you make shit up, the very same freedom that allows you to spread tall tales allows others to call you on your bullshit. Hence, you can't be thrown in jail for your atrocious documentary, as you have the freedom to make a movie with any message you want. 
I have that same right, thus, my movie, which runs along the theme that your movie what and what your movie supports is incorrect. You have the freedom to make a movie. I have the freedom to do my damnedest to debunk it. Thomas Jefferson got it right when he wrote, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Hundreds of thousands of Americans have given their lives to protect these values, but now they're under threat once again. No, they're not. It's just now they're not divine rights, but rather the definition of the rights necessary for a free society. The First Amendment guarantees freedom of speech and religion. It also gives the people the freedom from having the government press a religion onto them. Here's the thing about socialized schools. When you're a teacher, you're a government employee. Because you're representing the government, you can't teach religion, as that would be the government forcing religion on the people. As for the academic community, again, you're free to try publishing whatever you want. Just bear in mind that the same freedom that allows you to say whatever you want gives others the right to call you on it if you're wrong. And the academic community is rather good at calling people on their bullshit. The Darwinian establishment is so massive and so entrenched, it appears impenetrable. I couldn't bring it down myself, but I could at least confront those who would expel the scientists I'd met. So much for that healthy skepticism you so proudly touted at the beginning of the movie, you no? Know? What would you say if you had Eugenie Scott sitting next to you? What would you say to her? I would ask her, by what authority does she and, and those like her presume to declare what is and is not science? By the authority of the scientific method. If your hypothesis makes no testable predictions, it's not science by the very definition of science. We went into the Smithsonian looking for answers, but we ran into the same stone wall as Congressman Souter. We're not authorized to do this, Mr. Scott. Turns out you're not allowed to run cameras in certain parts of the museum. Whoops. It might have also helped if he'd actually arranged an appointment to see Mr. Small, who was, at the time, secretary of the Smithsonian. I have never been uh, treated like this in my about 30 years in academia. We received a similar reception at Baylor University. They refused to admit that what had happened to Dr. Marx had anything to do with ID. Uh, certainly the conversations I've had, uh, this has not, the uh, intelligent design that situation has not been the thrust of the conversation. I mean, it's a procedural issue, and that's, that's the way we dealt with it. Funny, that's not how Dean Kelly put things in his original email to Dr. Marx. Let's have a look at that email, shall we? Bob, I have received several concerned messages this week about an interview and website dealing with evolutionary computing associated intelligent design. Please disconnect to the website immediately, and Cheryl will arrange for a time for us to meet immediately upon my return. I am teaching in the I-5 program in Shanghai this week. Let's examine. From the look of it, people complained that the site had intelligent design in it, so that he wanted the site taken down until he could have a word with Dr. Marx. When he did get back, the dean told Marx that he could keep the site if he wanted. All he wanted was to be able to stick in a disclaimer that said that this didn't necessarily reflect the school's opinion. Basically, it means that Marx isn't representing the school on the website. Dr. Marx was unwilling to tell anyone that the school might not agree with him, so they shut down his website. The point is, he had every opportunity to keep that site up. I'm not mixing my religion with my science. The questions that I ask in, in, in my intelligent design research uh, are perfectly legitimate scientific questions. At least the top guns at Iowa State were willing to own up to their actions. What we wanted to stop is uh, the use of the name of ISU to validate intelligent design elsewhere. And we return to the same point. Guillermo Gonzalez was attaching the name of ISU to intelligent design. ISU wanted him to stop. He didn't. He didn't get fired, though. As I've said before, his academic career has been stunningly mediocre, and he was denied tenure on that basis.